Good morning, Malaysia, and welcome back to Bernama Today. Uh, a lot of exciting things happening in the news. Of course, uh, we talked about what's going on in various dailies today. The running narrative is uh, Dr. Her Toyo and uh, him going in to jail or being incarcerated for a year or so. Uh, do a bit of rehabilitation. He'll be out and about very soon, sooner than you think. Well, that aside, uh, let's talk about something more interesting. Um, the Eco Film Fest 2015, uh, we did speak about this a while ago extensively uh, on The Nation, but today we have the person who is instrumental in starting it. We've got Yasmin Rashid who joins us years ago over Trax FM and we were still a radio station. I interviewed her there and we talked a lot about her struggles in starting or commencing this project or initiating this project. Today, uh, years have gone by and it's grown exponentially so we're going to find out a little bit about its growth and a lot about its roots. Yasmin, thank you for joining thank us, Yasmin. Me, it's uh, great to have you here. It's an honor to have you here. You know, great work you're doing within the thank country. You. What does it feel like? How many years has it been? It's been eight years. Eight years yes. already. And I think the last time we met uh, was about was the festival. Eight I years had ago. then. I had then. <laughs> just, just so you know, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when you, when you started the festival, I remember you telling me, and it's still very clear in my mind, as to the amount of uh, problems you had, a lot of red tape, a lot of bureaucracy in getting something like this started. Have things changed? Things have changed. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have challenges that we, we battle with daily, mm -hmm. um, but I think that's part of every day and what, what you know, what, whatever that you do. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the ultimate challenge and test is: yeah, mm -hmm. are Malaysians um, receptive to this? Are mm -hmm. Malaysians looking at this platform as mm -hmm. a way uh, to guide them or to look at? Mm, taking um, actions or providing solutions for sustainability. Mm -hmm. So that's always been the back of my mind. Like if you come to the festival, what is that take home message for that person that walks into the festival? Mm -hmm. How many percentage of them go back home and practice what they have learned? Mm -hmm. um, so that, that I think it's not just um, specific to the festival. I think that it's a national problem as mm -hmm. well. Like mm -hmm. how do you capture the change and um, behavior our actions in mm -hmm. our daily lives. Mm -hmm. And w when people uh, attend the festivals from year one till now, I'm sure you've learned uh, through the years that you know uh, when you do certain things, it stands out to people and sticks. It's uh, imprinted in people's minds, and that's what you want mm -hmm. most of the time. So, what are the things that you've changed throughout the years in order to make messages or um, that message you want to send out stick in people's minds every time they come to join the festival? Um, one area which we have to innovate every year is the way we communicate. Mm -hmm. The way we communicate messages that people, layperson, would understand and would deem it as important or relevant in their daily lives. Because mm -hmm. if it's not relevant to them, why would they come? Mm -hmm. And if it's not something happening there that would, uh, you know, be beneficial to them, why would they come? Um, so changing the way we communicate. Um, that happens on an annual basis. We, mm -hmm. we, we have to be very dynamic with that. Mm -hmm. um, the second way is also changing the way we um, pitch this festival or share this festival with the corporate side of, of Malaysia. Right. Uh, as you know, this festival is non-profit mm -hmm. um, and it's free to mm -hmm. a large extent. Most of everything is free in the festival. And um, so we derive and or rely largely on sponsorships and donations. Mm -hmm. And that we're still trying to perfect it. It's, it's really hard um, to also get a potential sponsor to look at the benefits mm -hmm. of this festival. Because mm -hmm. most typical corporates would look in terms of basic parameters like return of investment in media coverage and all that. I mean, th I mean that's good, mm -hmm. but that's also very superficial. Right. Um, so we're looking for corporates who believe in our cause, mm -hmm. who believe in the effort that we are working on in the festival. Right. Because ultimately, it's really about transforming the mindset of Malaysians mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. through, uh, even if it's uh, 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 just one festival like this. and. Um, you know that like transforming people doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, yeah. It, it takes, you have to be persistent, you have to be creative with your messages, you have to be innovative with your approaches. So that, that has been a challenge every year right. you know, to get and the right partners. It's interesting you talk about this simply because while, whilst I was driving from Sromban to uh, do the show this morning, I was listening to uh, the business station and uh, there's this guy who, who just rambles on and on the morning was talking about 
compassion fatigue. You know, people are gonna, people who you know everyone's being asked to donate to some cause or to uh, there's some charity asking for money or some NGO needing funds. So apparently, or, or this is what people are saying now that a lot of people are going through compassion fatigue and you know they they don't know if. Uh, uh, they can do it, or you know, some of this is just 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 pull themselves away from it simply because it's just too much for them to handle at this point. So when you go out and look for sponsors <coughs> and people who want to help with this cause, is that is that going up or is that on a decline? Um, I would say for me this year yeah. it seemed to be going up. Um, somehow it doesn't it, despite the this like economic um, slip that we're having right yeah. now uh, we do have more inquiries coming into um, uh, from corporates asking to see if, if, if they can work with us right. on social responsibility programs mm -hmm. I, I, f I feel that maybe because it's something they have to do mm -hmm. and it's already allocated with a certain budget so right. it's really about finding the right partners for it but I can't agree more with you with mm -hmm. the term compassion fatigue. I mm -hmm. think everywhere, everywhere you go, every you, you're bombarded with, mm -hmm. you know, give us a dollar and you'll mm -hmm. make a difference in someone else's life and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. um, why there's more of this is because I think um, there are more. We're 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 not helping mm -hmm. more people ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's why you have this massive drive of coming to you for funds and all that if we're all doing a part right. um, and I'm not saying help a kid in you know 4,000 miles away but mm -hmm. if you can't even help the little kid down the road mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of an oxymoron right. uh, giving a dollar to save an animal that you will never see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or uh, protecting the animals that's just down the street down the street, you right. know. Right. Since the start of Eco Nights or uh, Eco Film Festival mm -hmm. um, has it gained traction uh, with regards to people looking at our environment saying, oh, we need to do something about this, something needs to be addressed, a corrupt politician needs to fall? Um, do, are things like that happening? Do you, see, uh, do you see this gaining attraction and creating a sort of a momentum? Yes, definitely, especially for the film screenings because we're bringing in films that you would never watch on your cable TV and so forth. And these are award-winning environmental films along with the filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And one thing... I love about the audience that comes regularly for the festival is they are very vocal. Mm -hmm. uh, after watching a film, everyone's waiting for, okay, what are we going to do now? Nice. And uh, c can someone tell us what's the next step after this, after this film? Like if, if it's a film about us killing sun bears in Sabah uh, and, and a few years ago and we had the, the filmmaker and the sun bear conservationist come, um, you can see the spectrum of emotions in the audience from uh, angry to standing up and on the spot raising money mm -hmm. uh, for the filmmaker for a indigenous group right. so they are empowered I feel of course uh, we need more people like that mm -hmm. um, and what's for me emotional and also a plus point is seeing Malaysians really want to step up and do something mm -hmm. I, I think many of us are uh, lost right. in terms of knowing what to do and who to go to and with the political climate as well there's so many stumbling blocks mm -hmm. here and mm -hmm. there so well, how do we well collectively just you know? to give you a li little bit more information about Yasmin and this is just digressing for what we're talking about she does a lot of work with uh, indigenous people in uh, Malaysia too I think that's fantastic you know people going out and helping them but uh, coming back to what we're talking about uh, with the festival every year uh, is there a theme that you run with or is there changes that you make to the festival on a yearly basis? Um, the theme varies every year. Mm -hmm. This year two uh, uh, main themes is wildlife mm -hmm. and indigenous issues. So we have a lot of selection of films that are uh, based on stories on indigenous communities and climate change. Mm -hmm. What's happening to indigenous communities not just in Malaysia but all around the globe. Right. Uh, issues are very similar. Mm -hmm. And number two is wildlife. This year we've had a record number of films submitted um, that have wildlife mm -hmm. um, messages in it and, and uh, some just right in our backyard as well, you know, right. about Sumatran uh, Malayan tiger and so right. forth. Right. So these two themes would be the, the main key for this year's festival. So the festival is free. It's free. So anyone can walk in. It's open for anyone any yeah. age yeah it's like a mm -hmm. little it's a massive festival every mm -hmm. year we expect about four to five thousand people mm 
Um, wow, four to five thousand people, yeah. and this happens over a period of how many days? Three days. Okay. Um, so Fridays, we it's, it starts with the award ceremony where, where we announce the winners, and Saturday, Sunday, it's basically meant for the family unit. Mm -hmm. um, we, my, I would like to, you know, encourage everyone to come. Uh, there is a green market happening with right. seventy-six. Yeah. It was here. I was meant to ask you that yeah. as a question, but since you talked about it, so I'm really <laughs> excited about yeah. the green market okay. because this year we really are <coughs> driving through the message of promoting mm -hmm. uh, smart consumerism, right. um, sustainable production and consumption. Mm -hmm. And uh, more than half of these exhibitors are local Malaysian companies that mm -hmm. have either really awesome or innovative green products or services. Right. And I, I wanted to make it known to the visitors that mm -hmm. Being green is already starting. The ecosystem is already there. Right. But if you want it to grow, we got to support mm -hmm. these entities. Mm -hmm. So this green market is meant for you to shop responsibly, to learn about who's out there right. with some amazing mm -hmm. green solutions for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, all the people that advertise within this book or the Ecofilm Fest book, uh, will be there at the green market. Yes, they yeah, will. like for for instance, this one pop tani. Pop tani. Yeah, you have you know. to come check it out. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of very <laughs> interesting stuff there. Go check it out. We're going to take a short break. Uh, we're going to come back and find out more about the Eco Film Fest 2015. Stay with us right here on uh, Bernama TV's, uh, of course, Bernama Today. <laughs> Good morning, the beloved country, and welcome back to Bernama Today. I want to use that. I used that. I studied that in literature, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Cry the beloved country. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. We're talking about the Eco Film Festival 2015. Joining me is the person instrumental in starting this, Yasmin Rashid, is with us. I interviewed her a lo long time ago, say eight years ago, over national radio. And uh, at that time, it was a tough time because it was just a, a start or the beginning of this whole project or initiative but things have uh, come a long way and I like a little quote I see in this book there is no such thing as a way when we throw anything away it must go somewhere and this was said by Annie Leonard can you give us more of an insight as to who this person is um I don't know actually. Yeah. <laughs> the, but the it's a quote in the quote. book <laughs> yeah. well, I think it relates to that workshop that we're mm -hmm, having at mm -hmm. the festival okay so the workshops too let's talk yes. about these workshops yeah um, well, this year we have 11 workshops mm -hmm. and talks uh, ranging from workshops for kids and upcycling all up the way to workshop on urban farming how yeah. do you start a basic farm in your garden or in your port uh, in, in your apartment um, balcony mm -hmm. and the idea of all these workshops and the, the content of these workshops is to allow the public to come in and spend an hour or two pick up a new skill mm -hmm. whether it's uh, about upcycling all your old t-shirts at home to something new or whether it's about learning what harmful products are out there in the mm -hmm. market that you're putting on your skin so it's meant to raise awareness uh, mm -hmm. primarily and number two it's meant to expose you to this whole world of green you know I think this term green is kind of overused many many mm -hmm. times but people really don't know how to incorporate green into their daily actions right so we hope these workshops will serve as a um, platform for, for Malaysians to come and, s and especially enjoy it with the children and and, and, and uh, experience learning some green lessons which you can do at home. So this is going to be happening on... Uh, 16th, 16th to 18th. 16th, 17th, 18th. That's a Friday, Saturday and mm -hmm. Sunday. Um, well, if you're doing nothing, please go. And even if you're doing something, put it aside <laughs> simply because it's time for us to open our eyes to things that can, you know, uh, which would be for the better of our country and also our lives, yeah, inevitably. Mm -hmm. And uh, having said that, you, you've got the, the market you're talking about, the green market, mm -hmm. you've got workshops. What, and, uh, so the film festival, how, do, how does it work? I, I walk in, watch a film, Mm -hmm. And how um, many films can I watch in a day? Oh yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, yeah. many, many of our regulars uh -huh. uh, that come every year would bring their jacket and their own coffee mugs and yeah. try to spend as much time. Mm -hmm. um, we highly encourage people to register for tickets, even though the seats are free. Mm -hmm. Reason being because seats are limited, right. and if you have a ticket, we'll put you immediately in the front. Mm -hmm. So that's the privilege of registering early for your tickets. And you can do it on our website, ecofilmfest.my. Mm -hmm. um, 
Secondly, I guess um, if you have a copy of the book, it'd be nice to look at the time schedules of the screenings. Right. So you can schedule something like, oh, I'll go, I'll go there for lunch, go to Publica for lunch, and maybe I'll catch a movie at 2.30 mm -hmm. um, in between that. Or, and of course, if you want to break from all the massive film screenings, 116 films, by the way, mm -hmm. um, we also have festival activities from games for children to performances by local artists mm -hmm. and all that. So if you're bringing your kids, they won't be left out. There's always something for someone yes. at the, the festival. Yes. Now, with festivals, you know, there's a, the, there's a time when it, it, it goes through it, it goes through the processes of making a name for, its, or its, uh, for itself and also uh, becoming a product which is known by everyone. Now, let's talk about the Rainforest Festival. Mm -hmm. It's a cool thing now, you know, it's, it's in people's bucket list. I have to go for the Rainforest <laughs> Festival in Sarawak before Been I there, die. Been there, done that. Yeah, you know, I, wh 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 what about this festival? Is it becoming a cool thing among people? Like Urbanscapes, we've got Urbanscapes. Yes, yeah. yeah. I, I know it's gaining traction with the younger people, uh, the Eco Film Festival, and on a yearly basis, from the time you started till now, do you see an influx of younger people joining in? Yes, definitely. Yeah. I think just our volunteers itself, uh, we had to close it, uh, no choice, last weekend because we, we had close to 300 over people registering. And we have volunteers flying in from different states just to be part of the festival. I really hope it's a really good sign mm -hmm. that young people are interested to chip into these kind of activities. Mm -hmm. um, having said so, it also means maybe in their own um, homes, mm -hmm. uh, they, there could be a growing demand for this. Right. Number two, um, performance has always been the fixture of it. You can't have a festival without music. Mm -hmm. And every year, we are quite amazed at the participation from our local musicians in this as, wo as okay. well. Even though they know um, we're, we're not profit driven, we don't charge ticketing fee for your performances, but they still come out and say, we'll still sing for you. Right, when you d say local musicians, who are we talking about? Um, there's Bill Musa, there's mm -hmm. Jumero, mm -hmm. um, there's All the, the Bonobi and Solitude. Yeah, m uh, a lot of them, of course, are, are popular via YouTube. Uh, but many of them are uh, yeah, singers or independent uh, mm -hmm. singers as mm -hmm. well. So a lot from the indie scene, they come to yeah. uh, bring bring out the spirit in the festival yeah. by you know, yeah. bringing some music Because I remember 2008 it. when we did the first one mm -hmm. and we had a radio tie-up. Mm -hmm. I think three or four bands were discovered at the festival. Really? They then later on went on to radios and they then they had albums. So um, it, it's, it's quite sentimental for me mm -hmm. that um, this could be a platform where you can start something. Right. And many of the exhibitors in the green market, um, the demographics show that many of them are entrepreneurs below the ages of 30. Mm -hmm. so, and, and yet they're out there being an entrepreneur, trying to you know, be enterprising at the same time, do something good for the planet. Mm -hmm. So there is a growing number of these young entrepreneurs that in the green right. industry. So, so now there's an ongoing campaign in the country. I don't know if there's a tie-in with what you're doing. You know, there's a separating of garbage and there's an act that surrounds that. And uh, 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 are, you, are you doing anything like that? You know, of course, we may think that you know separating garbage is easy, but uh, for the most part, you know, for housewives or or, or pe people who aren't the, the younger generation are very well tuned with this. You know, people of my generation or people a little yeah. older than me. You know, for them, it, it would still be a little thing to to see someone show them how to separate or how to com compact or compress your garbage. Things like that uh, are things like that yeah, happening at the workshops. Yeah, we have it there. We have uh, for all our volunteers to deem their meals and all that. Mm -hmm. or each volunteer are uh, requested to bring one to four kilos mm -hmm. of recycled items right. uh, to redeem their, their their items for being a volunteer. On top of that, we have a few um, NGOs mm -hmm. that are there collecting. Um, solid waste from uh, mobile phones, right. electronic waste, all up to even old clothing. Mm -hmm. And um, in return, they will get uh, vouchers. It's, this is just to reward people who bring their things to recycle with us. Mm -hmm. And for those um, who would like to try out our mobile solar charger, mm -hmm. uh, it, it will be there as well. So if oh you wow. run out of battery halfway, mm -hmm. we hope you will um, take a step and experience using green technology up front. Right. Um, so a lot of these little little side activities are meant to evoke that sense of, I guess, to get Malaysians impressed mm -hmm. uh, on what technology is out there. Right. But ultimately, is how how then after that can they adopt this in their daily lives? Right. So don't forget <laughs> the eight eco film festival happening on the sixteenth, seventeenth, and eighteenth. It's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Take time off. 
go there, support this good cause. It's been going on for the past eight mm -hmm. years. This is the eighth edition, yeah? Yes. The eighth edition comes on, on the uh, 16th. Uh, it runs from the 16th till the 18th of uh, uh, this month. With regards to the movies being screened, so after watching a movie, there'll be the person who, uh, the yeah. director of the movie, or... For the most films, yeah. uh, if, uh, we have a dedicated a group of volunteers who will be curating the films and hosting discussions with the audience. Mm -hmm. um, there we have filmmakers from France, US, mm -hmm. uh, um, where else? I think India coming right. as well. So what about our, our local players? Oh, no, our local boys will be there yep. on Friday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, some of our local boys are winning some awards as well. <laughs> yep. So and come and uh, support most of the you Malaysian will League. This, be careful. <laughs> 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 um, come and support yeah. these Malaysian filmmakers. Mm. I think. The filmmaking industry in Malaysia it ca can be growing so much more if you look at the kind of issues about environment that we, we can focus on as well. Mm -hmm. So there are, there are a lot of issues on the environment that we can a focus on. A well, while ago, I met this uh, kid who's about what, uh, tw 23, 24 years old. He's a, <laughs> yeah, he's a <laughs> British boy who's a really sweet person and he, he's, he walked all around Malaysia, he walked all around Sabah and Sarawak. And he says, you know, there's so much here and Malaysians just don't appreciate it. He comes all the way from the UK to walk around the country and just clean up like as he goes. Last year, yeah. a lot of the winning films mm. were about Malaysia, but shot by a British filmmaker or an American. Like, there's a story about dams in Sarawak that mm. we're screening this year. Mm -hmm. But the whole story was shot by an American crew. Right. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. I mean, we, we live here, mm -hmm. but we, we don't even care about this issue. And we don't even like... Um, putting it into in, into the, the global environment. I guess for the most part, most of us are comfortable and uh, you know, we do something sensitive, out of the way, sensitive, <laughs> you know. Uh, th this may come up, uh, may, may, may be seen as an expose and I might get in trouble. So yeah, a lot of people, unfortunately. Uh, unfortunately, that's the, the reality in which we live in. And mm -hmm. uh, before I let you go, your message to Malaysia with regards to uh, Eco Film Fest 2015, uh, Yasmin. Okay, well, the Kuala Lumpur Eco Film Fest is for you. Um, we hope that um, we are able to provide all sorts of activities, platforms for you to immerse yourself and mm -hmm. your family and your loved ones. Um, all you have to do is pick up something, a skill that you love uh, to import back into your homes, whether it's waste separation or learning how to farm sustainably at home or learning how to live a life that's chemical free. I mean, there's so many things about being environmentally friendly for us today. So I hope this festival will attract you. It's free. Uh, come join us at Publica. Uh, bring a water bottle, bring a shopping bag, um, and uh, we'll, we'll see you there. See, just by, by the way she did the closing, uh, <laughs> it's, it's uh, very telling of how acquainted she is with the media. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, uh, it's an honor having you here, a pleasure having it's you here. It's an honor to see you after and so long. Yeah, <laughs> and, and thank you for contributing so much towards our society and our country. Thank you. We just spoke to Yasmin Rashid, uh, the person who started the Eco Nights Film Festival, or uh, rather the Eco Film Festival <laughs> by Eco Nights. Don't forget it's on the 16th, 17th, 18th, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if you're doing nothing, go for it. If you're doing something, uh, put that off and go for this. <laughs> it's well worth your time. Take your family there. On behalf of the team at Bernama Today, I'm Jared Rodnam signing off. You have a great day ahead.